so in this tutorial as I promised you in my previous tutorial I'm going to actually show you how to do uh, predictive analytics or how are we going to create a predictive model right so uh, in this session I'm going to divide the session into uh, two sections first section I'm going to talk about the basic essential theory or concepts that you need to know before you go and create a predictive model that is the first part and the second part is that we are going to use uh, Python and Jupyter Notebook and then how are we going to actually create a model using machine learning right so at the end I will even show you briefly how we can create this model and extract that model as an artifact right where you can actually go and give that artifact to or that file it's called a pickle file uh, to a software engineer and the software engineer can actually host that uh, file or your model and uh, with the help of a front-end engineer they can actually create an application with the model that you have created so it's pretty interesting stuff i hope you will enjoy this session let's get started soon okay before we start doing predictive modeling let's learn some concepts machine learning machine learning is divided into mainly two categories supervised learning and unsupervised learning there's a third one called reinforcement learning let's cover that later and under supervised learning we have classification problems and regression problems right so let's learn about that in the next slide now you will see classifications and regressions here now in classifications what you ideally do is you classify some data into two or multiple categories right so the the types of problems that you can solve here are like uh, if you have been given a uh, a picture of a uh, some animal you can say whether it is a bird or an insect right you can ask from the computer given some categories you can ask whether the employee will stay in the organization or resign given some you know criteria you can ask whether a customer would buy from you or not buy from you or in medical science you can show a scanning and ask whether that uh, scan document is a cancer or a non-cancerous one right so you can see it's divided into two categories but at the same time you can see you know the green dots and blue dots now those are called false prediction no model is 100% accurate right so you will have always some false uh, you know predictions done we will learn those things in a, another tutorial now in a regression type of a problem the the type of problems that you're going to solve is like this given an education level what would be the salary of an employee given a location what would be the price of a land given an investment what would be the return that you will be getting so those are the types of problems you solve the next important thing that you need to know uh, when you are doing a model is your data set has multiple type of uh, data now for an example this column is what we call categorical data that means it has words right these ones are called numerical data and you can see these uh, question marks are called missing values okay before we start modeling we will have to transform these data into into suitable type of uh, data types missing values can be dropped categorical data can be transformed to numerical data now there are two methods we usually use to convert categorical data into numerical data uh, first method is called uh, label encoding method and uh, the second method is called uh, dummifying or dummification method now in label encoder method what you do is your categorical data you will convert it into a numerical data like this now you can see males are represented as one and the females are represented at zero and uh, it's in one column in dummification method what happens is again you convert the categorical data into a numerical data but you will have multiple columns here so you can see here again the male and female is there again zero and one but the difference is it's in multiple columns 
Now, based on the problem that you're going to solve, whether it is classification or regression, the way that you would transform the data would change. The next important theoretical piece is that given a data set, your data set will have to be split into a training data set and a testing data set. Now, usually you will use 70% of your data set uh, you know, for training and 30% of the data set for testing the model. Now, not like in this slide, but what will happen is really the computer will randomly take a sample, you know, randomly take the testing sample and the training sample. Okay, so after we split the data into training and the testing data set, now we have to actually apply the algorithms. So supervised learning has classification algorithms and regression algorithms, like uh, the examples that I have given here. And uh, for others also, you will have different types of algorithms. Now, which algorithm to use and what does that algorithm does is a separate tutorial. For this lesson, you only need to know that we are going to apply a classification algorithm into our model. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a predictive model and try to do some predictions. Okay, so let me go to uh, Jupyter and open a new Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to rename my Jupyter Notebook as Sam's Modeling Webinar. And I'll rename it. And then I will, uh, you know, import my data set. I have uh, shown you the coding in the previous uh, tutorial. Now let me check, double check whether the data has been successfully imported. As you can see, that is my data frame. Uh, let me first explain you a little about the problem that you're going to solve. So as you can see, the first column is longevity. That means uh, how long an employee uh, would stay in the organization. One means 36 months or more, three years or more. Zero means less than three years or less than three, 36 months. And in order to predict uh, that we have been given four, uh, you know, the uh, attributes. Their age is given, their marital status is given, university is given, distance from home is given. Now, whether this information is useful for us to predict the longevity of an employee is a different conversation that we should have. So I'm not going to discuss about that in this tutorial, but that is also very important. Uh, for this example, uh, just to show you, uh, we will think that the marital status is not very important to predict the longevity of a, an employee. So we are going to drop or we are going to remove that uh, column from the data frame that we will see later. And also you will see uh, we are going to use age, university and distance from home. Now age is not a problem because that is a numerical data column. But the university and distance from home are categorical data columns. So we will have to use the label encoder method and uh, convert those categorical uh, data columns into numerical data columns. Also, the distance from home column contains the province uh, they live. So it does not really reflect the actual distance from uh, work to their uh, house. But for simplicity, we will uh, consider that column as a useful information to predict the uh, retention ability of an employee in the organization. So I'm going to drop marital status column, right? That is the coding for that and run it. And you can see the marital status column is now gone. But there are two categorical uh, columns, university and uh, uh, distance from home. Okay, so next I'm going to uh, transform those columns into numerical columns. So I'm going to use the uh, label encoder method to 
do that and the coding is given here so you can pause the video and uh, learn that if you want now the two columns are university and distance from home when I run it uh, yeah so now I will go back to the data frame and show you df underscore sam2 now yeah so you can see those categorical columns are now converted into numerical columns using the method label encoder now the next is that we are going to split the data set into uh, 7030 uh, as we discussed uh, earlier you can pause the video and note down the the code I'll explain how we arrive at the code later uh, and uh, you can see the uh, this is called the you know the the variables or the attributes that we are going to give to the computer and uh, this is the attribute that we are going to predict in this model so you can see here it's a 70 30 uh, split okay so let me run the code just to see uh, whether there are any syntax errors no and next what I'm going to do is uh, I will basically apply the classifier name of the model will be CLF algorithm is random forest okay again let me run to see whether the coding is fine yes no issue now what we will do is uh, we will basically uh, try to do a prediction so the code for this is this uh, so let me enter age uh, university and uh, the distance from home here and when I run it should give me a prediction yes so you can see it comes as that the person will actually stay more than 36 uh, months uh, in our company okay next uh, now after the modeling we will have to actually extract our model as a pickle file so you can see uh, because uh, that is what the software engineers would be later on using and uh, create applications where normal users can use for prediction using the model so if I go to the root file now you can see uh, that file has been our model has been extracted as a pickle file I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, session of creating a model and predicting but there is something very important that we didn't do that is we did not really check the accuracy of our model right uh, now checking the accuracy of the model is something which is very very vital uh, it depends on the use case or, or, or the, uh, the problem domain that you are going to do this modeling. But just imagine if you are going to uh, deploy a model uh, in a domain like healthcare where the accuracy is not very good, right? Uh, you have not tested the accuracy. The, the, the results or the repercussions would be critical. So it means uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you might be entering certain data into the system and asking whether this is a cancer or not. You know, uh, the, the soft software predicts faultly that it is a cancer. You can see the amount of, uh, um, you know, the psychological uh, trauma that person is going through. Or based on your model, if a doctor is going to prescribe medicines uh, for cancer, that is going to be critical, right? So because of that, uh, we have to actually uh, be very careful about our models and we have to check over and over again the accuracy of the model so next tutorial I will actually speak to you on that subject how to test the accuracy of your model and also uh, there are a few uh, uh, things like confusion matrix that you have to check so those uh, topics we will talk later on in a uh, separate tutorial I'm sure you enjoyed this session and we'll meet again. Goodbye.